Hi everybody, welcome to a new Python tutorial. Today we're going to talk about generators in Python. Generators are functions that return an object that can be iterated over. And the special thing is that they generate the items inside the object lazily, which means they generate the items only one at a time and only when you ask for it. And because of this, they are much more memory efficient than other sequence objects when you have to deal with large data sets. They are a powerful advanced Python technique, so let's have a look at some examples to understand how they work. A generator is defined like a normal function, but with a yield keyword instead of the return keyword. So let's define a function, call it my generator, and here I can return or I can yield some values. So here I use the yield statement and yield a value. So I want to yield one. And then I can have multiple yield statements inside a generator function. So I can, for example, also yield two and then yield three. And now I can create a generator object. So I can say G equals my generator. And now if I print this, and this will only print that this is a generator object. And now what I can do, for example, I can loop over this object. So I can say for i in g, and then I print the value. So this will print one, two, and three. And I can also get the values one at a time with the next function. So I can say value equals next g and then I can print the value. So this will print one and this will execute the function and runs until, until it reaches the first yield statement and here it returns the value and pauses at this line. So the next time if I want to get the next value again with this next function. So again, I say value equals next G, then it will continue here and runs until the next yield statement. So it runs until here and returns two and pauses here. So if I run this now, it, pr it will print one and two. And if I do it again, then it will also return and print three. And now what will happen if I try to run it a fourth time? So now if I run it, this will raise a stop iteration because a generator object will always raise a stop iteration if it does not reach another yield statement. So yeah, this is how generators work. And you can also, for example, use them as inputs to other functions that take iterables. So for example, the built-in sum function takes a iterable. So I can give the generator object here and I can print this. So this will um, calculate one plus two plus three equals six. Or I can, for example, use the built-in sorted um, method and put the generator object here. So this will return this will create and return a new list with all the objects in a sorted um, order. So for example, if I have it the other way around, three, two, one, and then with this, I can sort it again, and then it prints one, two, and three. And now let's have a closer look at the execution of a generator function again. So let's say I have another generator and I call it countdown and it takes a starting number. And then I say, first of all, I want to print starting. And then I say while num is larger than zero, I yield the num. And then I also want to update the number. So I say num minus equals one. And then I uh, create my generator object. So I say CD equals countdown. And for example, I want to start at four. And now if I 
let's first of all run this and notice that this will not print starting here so nothing will be executed here and now the first time I want to get the first value with let's say value equals next of this countdown generator object now if I run this then now it will start from the beginning of this function and execute it so this will print starting and then it will run until it reaches the first yield statement and here it will return the number and stops at this statement so I can also print the value and then it prints 4 and again the next time I want to continue here with again with this next statement let's say print C, print next CD then it will continue here it will remember the current state so the current number is 4 then it will update the number now the number is 3 then it will continue in the while loop and then it stops again at this um, line and now returns 3 so now if I run this this will also print 3 and then again it remembers the state and the next time I continue it will continue from here and so on and again if I run this a couple of times so again if I print next and it will also print 2 and now it will also print 1 and now it will raise the stop iteration so this is the execution in detail and now let's have a look at the big advantage of generators so as I said generators are very memory efficient so they save a lot of memory when you work with large data so what this means is let's have a look at an example let's say I want a function call it first n and it takes a number as input and this will return a sequence with all the numbers starting from 0 all the way up to n so usually what you would do is you create a list call it nums equals an empty list and then you also say num equals zero so this is your start number and then you say while num is smaller than n nums dot append num so you add the current number to your list then you update the current number so you say num plus equals one and at the end you will return this list so you return nums and now I can say for example I can say um, my list equals first n um, and give it for example 10 and then I can or simply print this so now this will print all the numbers from 0 to 9 in a list and for example I can also calculate now the sum of this so this will print 45 and now here with this way all the numbers are stored in this list so this takes a lot of memory and now if I use a generator instead I can say I define another function first n underscore generator and now it also takes n as input and now I don't need the list anymore I simply say num equals zero and also the while loop while num is smaller than n and here I simply yield the current number so I yield num and then I also have to update the number so I say num plus equals 1 
So this is the whole implementation of this as a generator object. And now I can, for example, also print the sum of this first n generator object. And now you see this will um, give the same result. And this will also print 45. But here I don't have to save all the numbers inside this array. So I can save a lot of memory here. And for example, if I analyze this, so I can import sys. And now I can get I, the size of this object. So I can say sys dot get size of this object. This will return the size of this object in bytes. And again here, I also say print sys dot get size of this object. So first I print the size of my list object and then I will print the size of the generator object. And here we see that already the generator object is uh, smaller. And now let's say I don't have 10 uh, numbers in here, but let's say I have 1 million numbers in here and the same number of elements in here. Then this, you see, this takes way more memory. So in use cases like this, the generator object is very useful. So remember this. And another advantage of the generator object is that we do not have to wait until all the elements have been generated before we start to use them. Because we can, for example, get the very first item with the first next statement and we don't have to calculate all the numbers. Yeah, so this is the big advantage of generators. Now let's have a look at another example to, to practice the generators. Um, a typical example is the Fibonacci sequence. So we say define Fibonacci and this will give uh, this will get a limit as argument and the Fibonacci sequence works like this. So the first two numbers are 0 and 1 and then all the following numbers are a sum of the previous two numbers. So now we have 0 plus 1 is 1. Now 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3 and so on. So then we have 5, 8, 13 and so on. And to implement this as a generator, first of all, we have to store the first two values. So we say A and B equals 0 and 1 and then we say while a is smaller than our limit um, we yield the current value so the current value is a and then we update the current value so now we say a equals b and also we in the same line we update the b value and now the b value is the sum of a plus b the sum of the previous two numbers so we say a b equals b and so a is b and b is a plus b so this is the whole implementation of the Fibonacci sequence and now we can say for example fib equals Fibonacci and as a limit for example I give it 30 and now I can loop over this object I can say 4i in fib and then print i and now we see this will print the sequence until um, until this limit. And now as a last thing, let's have a look at generator expressions. 
So generator expressions are written the same way uh, like list comprehensions but with parentheses instead of square brackets and this is a very uh, simple syntax and a shortcut to to generate some generate uh, to implement a generator expression so I can say my generator equals and now I use parentheses and here I can use an expression with a for in loop so I can say I for I in range for example 10 and I can also um, use an if statement I can say if I modulo 2 equals equals 0 so this will um, put all the element all the even elements from 0 to 9 in a in my generator object and so for example I can print uh, or I can loop over this object so I can say for I in my generator and then print I so this will print 0, 2, 4, 6 and 8 and um, this is similar to the list comprehension so the list comprehension works the same way except that they use uh, square brackets here instead of the parentheses so I can say my list equals this expression and then if I print the list this will um, print the same sequence as a list and by the way I can also say I can convert a generator object to a list with the list function so I can say print list my generator and this will um, do the same thing and again let's analyze the size of this so let's say print sys dot get size of this object and here also I want sys dot get size of this object and now they here they are almost equal but let's say again I have a large number 100,000 then again my generator object is much much smaller and saves a lot of memory so yeah that's the concept about generators and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next tutorial where we talk about threads and processes in Python